Heyo everybody, Haku here with my review of Monster Musume no Iru Nijijo, or Everyday Life with Monster Girls, uh, Chapter 52. Uh, it's really, really great to have Mon Musu back from that hiatus. Uh, I'm really happy for that. And um, if I am running through this one a bit quickly, I don't have a ton of time to record today. But um, yeah, so if I'm running through it kind of quickly, that might be why. But either way, let's discuss this as thoroughly as I can. Um, I thought the cover was really nice. I already talked about it quite a bit in the live reaction, where I like the simple, well, I mean, it was cute too. Sue was really, uh, really cute this chapter, and normally Sue's a character that I like. I feel like I like all of the characters, but she isn't one of my favorites, but I really, really liked her this chapter. Uh, and the cover was nice. I like the uh, really simple designs. Uh, hearkening back to my favorite one that I can remember being the plain one with uh, Tio in the Mori girl dress. Yeah, that that was it, right? Um, so, uh, starting at the beginning, Sue connects her feeler thingy to the tank, presumably creating some sort of mental link, empathetic link with whatever's within it. Uh, she opens the hatch to it, and I love how the entire opening thing for however many pages didn't have dialogue other than the one uh, guy that was working on the truck. Other than him talking, there was no dialogue. I like that it was like just this cute little adventure story without Sue saying anything. I really liked that. Um, and everything was portrayed through actions and not words. I thought it was really, really cool. Uh, then Mon finds her and takes her home after she falls off the truck after opening the hatch. Uh, a couple days later, we see the bike cop and he sees Nessie in their uh, nearby lake or river or whatever. Uh, so my guess for that is probably either A, a giant slime so big that it isn't diluted in that body of water, or it's an undyne, uh, sort of like Dino was from the game, where it's just sort of a spirit within water, I guess. Uh, so for me, I thought possibly the funniest scene was uh, when Poppy was triple booked with Ki, Kino, and Kyuri, and I like that uh, all of them, they aren't being forgotten about. Anytime we mention Ki is great. Uh, I like that Kino is being mentioned again already, and that uh, she hasn't sort of been forgotten about, and that her and Poppy are friends, I guess, now. And uh, Kyuri as well. I think uh, seeing more of Kyuri and the girls she's living with will be cool if we do. Um, so I'm glad they aren't forgotten, but also I kind of started thinking because of this chapter, how are, well, at least for Kino, how are they still here? Because, like, I get, we never really got an explanation, because we said, or we were told that, um, the Matango, the Killer Bee, and the Vampire were dangerous species. They were species not allowed in the country. So if there's a ban from them in the country, how are they still there? Like, I get for Kira... Like, we didn't actually see it, but you could argue Smith probably said off-screen, like, you know, it was kind of a misunderstanding, Ragnara kind of set her up. Or with Cutie, you could make the argument that, like, okay, she isn't really dangerous, it was just her, uh, the ghost of her daddy issues. Um, kind of a literal, kind of a literal ghost in a way, in that cursed necklace that went floating away. Uh, as weird as that may be. But at least for Kino... As much as I love the character and as much as I want to see more of Kino, yeah, I she's kind of dangerous. She can't control when that whole spore thing happens, and that could really affect a lot of people if it happened outdoors. So, I mean, I guess they could have given her a place to live, but I feel like the ban on Matango is actually kind of reasonable, since uh, she really can't control it and it is dangerous. Uh, but either way, I just would have liked for us to have uh, gotten an explanation there. So then the priest calls Mia, says it's time for her to come in. Uh, Mon calls Saria, and uh, Mero is called by her mother. And even Ragnara gets a call, and I really hope it's from Ren. I've been saying for a long time I'd love to see Ren show up more and maybe have some storyline where she's trying to reconnect with Ragnara, and even if she's not trying to get her back as a homestay, if she's trying to befriend her so that... Uh, her, like, Ragnara and Ren can sort of become friends and move past what, uh, their past was. So, uh, I would love to see Ragnara go to hang out with Ren. That would be awesome. Or it could maybe be Kira as well, because we know Kira still has her score to settle with Ragnara. And she could have been calling her to say, come on, it's time to duel, settle our score. And that's why Ragnara was like, no, not today. 
So that'd be interesting. Or I just kind of thought it may, it may have been Lilith as well saying, Ma Master, yes, please, come, Master. So um, that, that could be a possibility. I just thought of that. It could have it could have been Lilith as well. Uh, so then Sue is picking up some sort of signals, which was hilarious. And it appears she has some kind of telepathic link with whatever that creature was, whether it's another slime or whatever. Um... Because that's the only real thing I could think of to why she could hear it from a distance like that. Uh, then um, it'd be interesting if she can use her feeler thing on her head to sense people's emotions and stuff from a distance by making it a satellite like that. But either way, uh, Lala tries to stop Sue and ends up getting speed looted. Uh, then the line I love, the giant sexy disaster line, I thought that was great. Um, then Lala and Kurus go to give chase after. I love the um, cute Lala periscoping over the truck. Uh, Sue runs through a fence and a door. They follow along until they get to the door. And poor Lala, when she has her, like, she has her head hit by the door after being hung up by her hair. It was terrible. Poor Lala. And I thought it was funny as well, the way when she was in pain with uh, being hung up by her hair, her chuni, her chuni bio was broken and she was just completely lucid and uh, speaking in normal terms. Uh, then uh, Sue sticks to the side of a truck, so we get a, a funny cab driver and Lala exchange. I thought that was great. Uh, Sue then tries to meet the, uh, the Nessie, the, the lake, the whatever it is, and is captured by some men in a van, then they speed away, and if they're getting confused with Sue and whatever it is they're trying to catch, maybe it is another slime, maybe it is an undying, because I could see that kind of looking like Sue as well, at least from what we know of them in Okiyadoverse. Okay uh, even though I'm pretty sure Okiyado didn't exactly do all the designs, for the uh, game, which is why they aren't quite as good as the manga designs, but either way, I digress. Um, so yeah, and then at the very end we see that Lala's head has stowed away in the van with them. Ah, and then actually we get a uh, funny little omake as well of Seria explaining why they have a uh, truce to not go out to go after Karus at night because of... Um, because of them uh, having a bad experience where pretty much Ragnara can tie them up and they can get Sue to loot Ragnara and uh, it's just a big tie between them and it's not worth it. So uh, yeah, I thought it was really funny. I thought that it was just a cute adventure. Uh, I'm happy to have Mon Musu back definitely after the um, after the hiatus. So uh, yeah, I think it'll be cool too as well. If the Nessie ends up, a lot of people were saying, oh, it'll be like Sue's mom. If it is like a mom equivalent for Sue, since we have seen uh, Mia through Marrow's mom, uh, mom equivalents, well, I guess they were all their actual moms, except Poppy's is a little bit questionable. But uh, yeah, I do think it'll be cool if whatever this slime thing is, it's like the, a host slime or a queen slime. It's like her mom equivalent. So, uh, yeah, for this one, sorry it was a bit quick. I mean, it ended up being like eight minutes, but uh, I'm giving it nine slime adventures out of ten. Because uh, I thought it was really, really funny. It was a good chapter of comedy. So either comedy and a little bit of fun little adventure. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like if you did like the video. If you want a link to the Discord, just comment down there and I'll give you one because uh, we do talk about Mom Musa there quite a bit recently. I guess just because it's back and it's been more current. Um, comment down there, tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it and all that. Subscribe for more Mon Musu and more. We will be uh, covering the manga as chapters come out, plus discussions and top tens and stuff when I feel like it and when I, when I can. Um, follow on Twitter if you want to try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel and talk to you there as well. That is it, so thank you once again for watching and I'll see you all next time.